Lighthammer Fantasy. Welcome back to another Vidhammer Battle Report. This is Spudlow, and in this video we'll be covering a 2500 point battle line engagement between the Tomb Kings and the Dogs of War from the Regiments of Renown using the 8th edition rules. Our playing surface is one foot wider than regulation, so the outermost six inches on the right and left sides of the screen are considered to be off of the board. Our terrain pieces consist of two hills and a forest that everyone avoids, and a mist-wreathed swamp and a building at the top. The Dogs of War win the roll for placement and elect to have the Tomb King set up first, who choose the left side of the board and start with a unit of 15 skeletal archers. The Dogs of War follow with 12 Marksmen of Miragliano, then 63 skeletal archers, 30 long-drawn pirates, 20 skeletal warriors, 10 Golgfag's ogres, and 43 tomb guard before the Dogs of War place three cannons for their war machines. Then a Hyrotitan, 15 Volans Venators, a Screaming Skull Catapult and Casket of Skulls for the Tomb King's war machines, and 15 Rugluds Armored Orcs. The Tomb Kings place their characters, consisting of a Tomb Herald BSB with the Banner of Eternal Flame that goes with the large archer group, and is the bodyguard of High Queen Kalita Big Jugs, who is also with the large archers. A Tomb Prince goes with the Tomb Guard, while the three level 1 Lich Priests go in the small archer unit, and a level 2 Lich Priest goes with the large archers. For the Dogs of War, a Paymaster General and a level 4 Wizard go with Rugluds Oryx, and a Mercenary Captain goes with Volans Venators. For Spell Generation, the Dogs of War get Throne of Vines, Flesh to Stone, Regrowth, and the Dwellers Below, while the Tomb King's level 1 Lich Priests all take Shem's Burning Gaze, and the level 2 Lich Priest ends up with the Invocations of Skullstorm and Desert Wind. The Tomb Kings win the starting roll and move their archers forward two inches with the Tomb Guard and Skeleton Warriors advancing. In the Magic phase, Winds of Magic and Channeling gives the Tomb Kings seven power dice against three dispel dice. They use a single die to attempt Shem's Burning Gaze on the Marksman twice, but both castings fail. Learning a quick lesson, they use two dice for the third attempt that causes four wounds. Next, they use two dice for the bound spell from Kalita's Venom Staff on the Long Drongs, but it gets to spell along with an attempt at the Casket's bound spell, Light of Death. But the efforts reap rewards as the Marksmen fail their leadership test and run five inches. For shooting, the smaller archer unit fails to wound the long drongs while the larger archer unit gets five, and the catapult drifts wide. On the Dogs of War turn, the marksmen rally as the others move forward. For magic, the Dogs of War get nine power dice against six dispel dice. They first use two dice to cast Throne of Vines with irresistible force on the caster's unit, and he avoids the miscast. Next, they use four dice to cast Flesh to Stone on the Ogres to give them plus four toughness, and they regain two of the Marksmen from the Life Bloom effect. They use their remaining three dice to attempt regrowth, but it gets dispelled. In the shooting phase, the first cannon takes out three archers from the larger unit, while the remaining two take out the Hyrotitan. On the second turn, the Skeleton Warriors fail a charge on the Cavalry as the Tomb Guard move up. Winds of Magic and Channeling gives the Tomb Kings 10 Power Dice against 4 Dispel Dice. They use their first 2 dice for Kalita's Venom Staff, but the spell fails. Next they attempt Shem's Burning Gaze 3 times with 2 dice apiece. The first 2 cause 2 wounds on the Long Drongs, while the third attempt is dispelled, as well as a final attempt at Light of Death. For shooting, the archer unit takes out one long draw, while the large archer unit takes out 14 more. 
The catapult shoots for the cavalry for two wounds and causes a panic check that the cavalry fail and end up running 12 inches. The longdrongs also fail their panic check and run through the rugluds, but they hold steady. The dogs of war charge the tomb guard with their ogres. The longdrongs fail to rally and end up just shy of the board edge as the cavalry pull it back together. For magic, the dogs of war get seven power dice against five dispel dice. They use five dice to attempt flesh to stone on the ogres, but it gets dispelled with a scroll. They use their last two dice to attempt regrowth, but the spell fails. In shooting, all three cannons shoot for the casket, with the first two missing and the third getting a misfire that prevents shooting for two turns. In the first combat round, Goldfag does one wound to the tomb guard, who put 14 wounds on the ogres, who get four in retaliation. The ogres lose the combat and fail their break test, running eight inches while the tomb guard pursues seven. On the third turn, the tomb guard charge the ogres who flee through Rugluds orcs. The tomb guard redirect into the first cannon, while the Rugluds fail their induced panic check and flee through the ogres and the longdrongs and end up off the table, taking their only caster and the army general along with them. For normal movement, the archers and casket step up to be within range. Winds of magic and channeling gives the Tomb Kings 10 power dice against 6 dispel dice. They use 3 dice to attempt the Venom Staff's bound spell, but it gets dispelled. 4 dice are used for Shem's burning gaze twice for 5 wounds on the marksman, and the final 3 dice are used for light of death, but it gets dispelled. For shooting, both archer units shoot for the ogres, with the small unit failing to hit and the larger unit getting only two wounds. The catapult shoots for the ogres, but drifts onto the marksmen, taking out two, and they pass their panic check. In combat, the tomb guard lose a single model to the cannon crew before they get cut down and overrun into the next. The dogs of war let slip the cavalry, who charge the tomb guard, as the Longs find their drongs and they rally with the gold fags close behind. No casters remain. The only shooters moved. So combat, where the Venators fail their leadership and win the prize of weapon skill one. The cavalry put two wounds on the tomb guard who take out the cannon and get three wounds back on the cavalry who lose the combat but pass their break test. As the Tomb Guard reform, they realize there isn't enough time for another full round, and the Dogs of War acknowledge a victory for the Tomb Kings, thanks in no small part to some very scared Dogs of War. Thanks for watching this battle report. Be sure and check back for new videos each week. Do us a favor and subscribe, like the video if you want to see more, and send us a message if you have any tactics or matchups you'd like to see. Till next time for the Vidammer Crew, keep fighting!